since I was a child, I was very interested in graffiti. Um, I sadly, when I was younger, I never really had the chance to actually uh, spray and graffiti myself um, because I did not have any friends or anyone that I knew. But uh, so now, finally, uh, after all this time, I can um, combine it with my study area, which is cartography. And so just to give you a little bit of an understanding, maybe just one more explanation. So I will do this presentation in two parts. The first part will be some theory. In the second part, I will give a short demonstration of what I've been working on for the past two and a half months. Exactly. And first of all, cartography. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle. I can call myself a cartographer, at least. Yeah, I do. I call myself that. And uh, to the le left, it's hard to read. It's the reality, objective reality. And so I perceive reality or a cartographer perceives as we all do the reality. And then there's a selection of data that the cartographer um, makes. And then he translates that onto a map. So a map is basically one way communication of spatial data. And why a map when we talk about graffiti? Um, it's been mentioned before that uh, graffiti, of course, is highly contextual. So it depends a lot on the context where it, is, um, where it was created. And so as you can see, um, yeah, first of all, the spatial context to understand the background of the artwork and to maintain a connection to the original message and the purpose of, of the graffiti. And the map also helps the users to gain an overview of the situation, first of all, like from a, a wider scale and then from a close-up scale to view the geographic shape of individual graffiti and um, also to explore the graffiti data through interactive features. Um, yeah, I have some of these features. You will see them very soon. Uh, and to create this web map prototype, uh, I decided to use um, a JavaScript library called MapLibre, which is open source. There's, uh, there's Mapbox, JLJS, which is commonly like widely known, but they decided in 2020 to move to, uh, um, to a, a license where they charge the user or they charge like the API something anyways. So that's where MapLibre comes in, which is open source. And I mainly chose it because um, it allows also to create 3D maps. And uh, here I want to just um, show you the data that I'm using currently. Um, I have buildings. Uh, the, the geometry data of the buildings is from the city. It's publicly available. And the names of the buildings, they are from OpenStreetMap. Then the images. Um, I've been provided by uh, Indigo to test some of the test data. So I have image files and I have these geometry files. And then lastly, uh, the base map is also publicly available. And uh, just a closer look at uh, the, the geometry data from Indigo. This is what one graffiti looks like uh, in like a kind of uh, text version, um, a chip trace in the file. Um, as you can see, there's lots of coordinate um, tripl triplets. Uh, so we have uh, yeah, three-dimensional coordinates. And all of these together create this uh, polygon, multi-polygon feature. Uh, sorry, just polygon feature. And uh, exactly. And now a word also on map generalization. Um, yeah, uh, the map generalization is the process that simplifies the representation of geographical data. So every cartographer uses generalization because I learned this in my first lecture, because uh, the world is too large, like you cannot create a one to one map of reality. So you always, of course, the point of the map is to make it smaller. And so you have a loss of information and to deal with this loss of space or the loss of information that comes with the limited space, you have to use generalization. 
And uh, I tried to uh, come up with some generalization um, procedures. And I get, I used the original data from Indicom. And based on that, I created here these sim polygons um, by just putting like a minimum area bounding box uh, that um, um, contains this original data uh, to make it more visible. And also I tried um, to create these lines, this line simplification, and then just the points, which are the centroids of these uh, polygons. Uh, but I did not include this into my map yet. So this is just for now. And then this is included in my map. So um, I tried to simplify the 3D data. So we have these complex um, 3D polygons. And through just by simply extr uh, extruding uh, the, of the 2D polygons along the height axis, I created here more simple 3D polygons. And there's some loss of uh, some of the shape, but I chose to neglect that currently in my map and to just display them like this. So these are the same uh, graffito shapes, just simplified here. Uh, yeah, here you can see how this extrusion works. So first of all, I have like the shape in 2D, the, the polygon and the height for everything is zero. And then through extruding it, um, I get this, these shapes. Uh, exactly. I think it's already the time for live presentation. And this is how my map currently looks like. I'm um, just trying to... I eat. Oh, no. Yeah, I can start. Oh, yeah. I think I got it. Yes, you know. Do you know how to go to full screen? My screen. No, no. Okay. Um, I will refresh the map really quick because at the beginning I have like a, a short animation, which I'm really happy with. Uh, so you fly into the Donau Canal here. Um, yeah, that's a cool feature that you can do these animations. And currently all the buildings are displayed. Uh, you can move, of course, the camera right now. It's like the 3D mode. Um, I decided to include these buildings um, because it just gives a lot of context um, to understand more like the what's going on here, the spatial context. And then you can already see some of the graffitis currently. Oh, I'll have to refresh this one more time, I think. Okay. Um, you can already see some of the graffiti uh, that I displayed here. And to the top left, it says number of graffiti loaded. If you can read that. Number of graffiti loaded, 79. So I have 17, uh, 97. So I have 97. Um, graffiti at display. And if you mouse over one of them, uh, you get like a short, uh, a small little um, preview, I guess. And then if you click on it to the right, you see like a, 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 um, a panel where, and it's kind of linked. So if I hover over one of these uh, graffiti to the right, it the panel it moves to the exact graffito. And currently there's not so much information here. Um, of course, here to the right, I would put in all the information. Um, just right now there's a link to the artwork in a larger size. And then the cool thing is, um, which I also like this feature, that if you're interested in one of them, you can simply click on it and then the map takes you to the location. And yeah, it works for every single one. And then there's some uh, filtering already implemented. Right now, I only have these two uh, ways of filtering the graffiti. Uh, those that are more text-centric and those that are more visual-centric. So if I remove all the text-centric graffiti, we end up with 
only these, which are like more characters and like abstract graffiti and um, exactly. So the map uh, just updates whenever I put a filter. And then we have the temporal filtering, which is a simple uh, slider, or you can uh, pick a date. If you're interested in a specific day, you can exactly, you can just um, write, uh, select that one day, and you see that there's 23 uh, graffiti currently visible on that day. And then you can uh, have a list of uh, these exact points. Um, however, the dates right now, it's just made up data that's just synthetic data currently uh, that I came up with. Um, so these are the ways of filtering. And then we have the 2D button. If I press this, we get like more classical map. I can also hide the buildings, which makes more sense in the 2D mode. And then it's just a, a regular top-down view map for users if they prefer that. And currently the only feature I have in this mode is if you zoom out, you have just clustering, which tells you yeah, how many graffiti are in which uh, area, like based on the radius, these clusters. And if you zoom out, yeah, you get the same number. And uh, I think that that's about it. I think that's about all the features uh, that are currently present. So let's go back to the rest of my presentation. I have added some pictures here for those that uh, maybe were not here for this live demonstration. Oh yeah, I forgot. If you click one of the buildings, uh, you get the name of the building and also one more feature that I forgot uh, down here to the bottom left, of course, it's not so easy to see. I, myself, I forgot about this, so I will probably put this button somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can show us the different uh, base maps. Currently, there are like four different map styles. So if you prefer like a more um, grayish, not so high, a colorful um, base map, then you can select that one. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just briefly about my next steps, because uh, my research is not finished. I'm kind of in the halfway point currently. So I would like to finish uh, the web map prototype and then do some quali qualitative usability testing uh, in order to answer the, some of the research questions. And um, for instance, what are the advantages and disadvantages of different visual representations of graffiti? And how does the user experience differ when viewing graffiti in a 2D or 3D web map. So I will have probably about 10, 10 people that I will do the uh, testing on, and hopefully I will come up with some interesting results. Yeah. And also, um, if any of you have some advice or some input from me, since the research is not finished, uh, yeah, I would love to hear that from you. And thank you so much for your attention. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, we have questions. Um, um, maybe I missed it, but uh, how is the darkness setting? What's the one? Um, I, I received shape files, like, mm -hmm. and I converted them to a GeoJS format. And right now, I just put the GeoJS in, like, in a folder, and I fetched, like, the folder, but you could also put the GeoJS in a type it into the HTML, into the code itself, but yeah. So if I want to share that out, I'll just pick up the files. Okay. Yeah, speak. Okay, exactly. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, like, what is the viral goal of this project? I know you are still working on it, but like, how do you in the community being helpful in the future? Probably not only for graffiti, but for other stuff, but I'm just wondering, like, it looks amazing as if you'll enter the video game. But for, for me, it's like a bit hard to, to understand, like, what is the, the final outcome of it? Yeah. Um, I would say for me, 
Um, since Indigo has a uh, great data, um, all this data, it would just be lovely if, if it's all um, available for the for the users or for anyone interested, and it will be, but um, it would just be amazing if it's available in the form of like a very user-friendly way and also maybe a fun way or an interesting way for the user to explore uh, Indigo's data. And um, yeah, I, I think if, for example, we talked about these queries or we talked about uh, maybe these questions that users may have of where are all the red graffiti on the, on the yeah, on the north side of the Donald Canal or something. That's not currently possible with my web map, but it's kind of going in that direction for the user to just um, yeah, explore. So if I understood correctly, like at one point it might be an ad or or like available over in the online. You can have it on your phone and like, okay, now I see, you know, that uh, this particular artist who I love is like 300 meters away. And I will also have a look at, uh, this map guiding me to get exactly there. Is, is this the uh, point? And yeah. then, you know, I can comment on the spot uh, and add some maybe, maybe comments or info or whatever, like when I get to this particular piece. Yeah, that would definitely be possible. And um, yeah, with this project or with this research, I didn't think that it would like put you directly into the Donald Canal. Like I didn't think that it would record lo your location, like your sensor on your phone. Mm -hmm. It was more for desktop use. Like if you sit at home comfortably and you want to look at the graffiti data, but yeah, what you said, that's definitely also possible. And yeah, exactly. I think like you can any device that has the internet connection, you could open this website. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's possible to do it from the smartphone. Right, right now it's not um, optimized for phones. Like it's optimized for kind of the larger screen, like the desktop. Mm -hmm. um, but with some, with some work, you can optimize it also for your smartphone. Okay, thanks. So for the question, it's not really a question, it's more like yeah. a compliment than reward. Uh, yeah, I think it's great to see that here. Um, and also in relation to what we learned this morning, when uh, Jayner said that he would only be using platforms if they were user friendly, right? So maybe this would be something that, that you said in the last slide that you could also try to explore, right? What is a user friendly way of disseminating graffiti? And since you also have this in mind, I think this could be a very interesting art form also. You put all this to it, but only friends, so that you graffiti creators to really ask what they think it works. If this is a way for them to navigate their graffiti school. Well, surely, I don't think we're able to sing to test it on actual writers. And there is a renewable piece that I will, there was in back on this uh, gray um, only box or only only. So um, you can, I mean, um, without scrolling or without um, any overlinch. So, I would, yeah. I would, I would be able to see preview from the only gray box I could choose from the book name. I'm not sure what... if I can, I think I didn't get this uh, mm -hmm. right now. I'm just like this, uh, crazy polygon ah, on the right. On the right? No, all the epigraphy pins. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a most yeah. And since you, um, um, mm -hmm. you mouse over, take a mouse over, then you see your preview. Yeah, I think it would be great if you could see your like the, the um, body image on this gray box. True. I had it like this. That's, that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Good. Hmm? One box. Okay. And you. Yeah. Yeah. you carry the name with the new model on the labs. So special and Yeah, currently I don't handle them at all. So there's a on top of each other. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, that's one of the challenges. That I hope I still have the time to look into. Um, I already have some thoughts about it, how I could handle the overlap. Um, and one of the thoughts is just um, in the beginning of the website, like um, I check, there's a tool where you can check if, if features 
inter um, stitches intersect each other. And then I would just uh, like flag these features that have intersection. And then later on, if I mouse over one of these um, uh, polygons that intersect other polygons, then like something happens. If you mouse over, then um, they are being raised along that high axis, uh, along like the like the, the youngest or like the, sorry, the oldest graffiti stays where it is, and then all the all the graffiti that intersected it get um, um, moved like higher. Yeah, just when you mouse over, so it's like one of the approaches that I'm thinking of. But it's kind of described like I mean, then it's not. Why you mouse over then it's not accurate because it like doing these changes. But yeah, uh, I'm mean, just thinking of how to how to handle things. Yeah. It's, yeah, I will do some more testing on uh, this. Yeah, it's very interesting. Some more questions? Hmm? About your questions, uh the to interviews do you have any hypothesis about how people will react first like who you want to interview and second if you have any ideas beforehand about the response um, i think i would like to interview like the right variety of people i mean only 10 people probably but um yeah different ages different um, maybe areas where they come from um and, but my hypothesis is just that the 3D map is more popular, that people spend more time with the 3D map. Uh, but I didn't really think so much about that hypothesis, but that's a good thought. Yeah. 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 Yeah.